Hello YouTube, uh, this will be my first ever product review and I'm going to be doing it on a Cobalt two-stage air compressor, 175 PSI max. You can get these at uh, Lowe's. Um, so let's go over the first thing that was transportation to the house. Well, let's step back. It's going to be an actual product review, not me reading from the box. Uh, so the first thing is when you transport it from the home, uh, it is top heavy, so be prepared for that. I even recommend just taking it out of the box, the box off the top, it's bolted down to a pallet, and run your cables back through here and strap it down to the tank, just avoid the check valve. So if you get it home, uh, you'll need to hook it up. It is a 220, 240 volt. You need 12 gauge wire, uh, the maximum is 75 feet. So here's the cable, you can purchase that at the store as well. Um, you have your equipment ground that's right here in front. Then the two hot legs go up here in the top. It's pretty straightforward to wire it up. Uh, the manual does a pretty good job. Also too, you'll need your cable. Uh, this is where my 240 is and uh, it's my welder plug. Uh, use the same plug. So the compressor, even though it says it is a cobalt, it is actually a Campbell Hassel field. Um, you can see the stamping right here. Uh, the motor itself is a 3.7 horsepower uh, continuous duty. And it's a little hard to see back in there, but it's continuous duty. It is a compressor motor. And right here it still shows it's made by Campbell Bell Hassel field. So that being said, um, Lowe's does sell another air compressor that's black. Um, I believe it may be even two cylinders, but it is not two stage. A two stage has typically a larger piston. Um, air comes in, compresses, you know, up to let's say 135, 150. Then you have an interconnect intercool tube that goes from one to a smaller piston, then it compresses higher comes down the copper tube into the tank, and then the check valve holds it. Uh, so the compressor also too has here a oil sight. The top of the red circle is full, and then when you actually get to the bottom is the add mark. Uh, the oil is specified as Mobile One Synthetic 10W30. It's nice that they actually tell you that and not buy a cobalt brand. Um, when I first turned it on after I got it hooked up, um, it, there was a little vibration of the cage, um, which is back here. There was a little bit of clearance issue between the cooling tube and transfer tube. Um, I fixed that simply by putting a zip tie here and another zip tie here, and it tightened the cage up and doesn't rattle anymore. Um, there is one thing I don't like about it, and I think it's some of the where the vibration that come from, is the flywheel on the pulley or on the compressor. It's a casting, and you know they could have machined it a little better and balanced it a little bit better. I would have gladly paid you know twenty bucks for that for that machine. I may try to balance it later myself, but it's not unreasonable. Um, the other things you'll need with your compressor is. These pads, uh, they do sell them to the store, but it's nothing but a piece of steel with rubber, and then you put uh, loosely the anchor bolts down on it. It keeps it from walking and cuts down on transfer of the energy into the concrete or whatnot. Uh, they also sell a what they call a shutoff kit. So coming out of the compressor, it's three quarters an inch national pipe thread. Um, and then it reduces down and you have a valve. But the valve that they sell is not rated for this compressor. And I've heard of several people saying that it will burst. So I got into the black iron section at the store, bought the three quarter, three eighths reducer. And then, you know, I have an elbow here and then a nipple and then a T. Then a T goes back towards uh, my regulator. So after that, you have, um, hang on a second, let me shut my phone off. There we go. So we have the T, and then I put another ball valve here that I can release water. It's almost like a pre-water separator. 
Uh, that'll be important here in just a second. So after that, it goes back to my regulator, then, you know, to a water oil separator. And then I reduce down to the quarter for the standard air hose fitting. So this pre-drain, if you actually read in the manual, it will tell you not to open the drain valve, which is actually located down here. Not to open it until it's 40 PSI or lower. Well, what happens if you have, you know, the tanks at, you know, say 120, 150? That's where that this piece right here will come into play. Now, previously I had a oilless cobalt pre compressor, and it was loud. It kind of sounded like a Honda Civic with that annoying exhaust. So, comparing, you know, this one, it's kind of like, here in the American muscle car of V8 and not the Japanese import that has the exhaust that everyone wished the engine would just blow up and that car go away. Um, so also too, I have this compressor in the house, or I'm sorry, in the garage, and when I'm in the house, it sounds like a very faint helicopter in the distance. It's not annoying, but you know, you can hear it. Um, so I'll turn it on, and I'm going to be standing about three feet away, and it's, it's you know, I can talk if you'd like, but um, you you could hear me talk. It's, it's, like I said, it's not that loud. So we'll turn it on for a quick second here, because uh, I can't run it too long. My neighbor is, she's a super nice person, loves me to death. So here we go. So yeah, I'm making my neighbor happy now, so that's good. So I turned it off and you heard that the air release and what it's doing the pressure switch is releasing air from your tube up um, so that way when the compressor does re-engage it makes it much easier for momentum to get started and compression to start again so that's the reason why you hear that so it being a 175 psi max it does shut off you know, around 175-ish, and it'll kick back on at, you know, around 130. Uh, the cycle times will depend on, you know, what the consumption or tool is. You know, this is um, rated at 11 CFM at 90 PSI. They do have, let's see if I can get it here. They do have this little charge. They'll tell you 60 gallons um, operates continuously with just about everything. And then intermittently is your very high air consumption items, you know, straight line sanders, those things are brutal, and, and jitterbug sanders. So when I first hooked it up, I let it, you know, be atmospheric pressure and then closed all the valves and turned it on. And these were the results. So after a flip of the switch, it was at 30 PSI in 1 minute and 43 seconds, 60 PSI, this is tank pressure. Uh, 60 PSI at 3 minutes and 26 seconds, 90 at 5.08, uh, 120 at 7.53, 150 at 8.41, and 175 at shut off at 10 minutes 15 seconds. So like I said, it tr kicks on uh, around 130 PSI, kicks back off at 175. So you can kind of get your, your recovery time as long as you're not using tools. Now you can also to adjust the pressure pressure switch to take it to where it re-engages you know at a lower pressure a higher pressure but I imagine that they maximize the life of the compressor and recovery rates based on its on and off set points um, so I have not got to use it you know actually working with tools and stuff but you know these are just some of the things that I've noticed and you know kind of get you a, a a look over the compressor since there's not a lot of information out on the internet yet because um, this is their new two-stage and not the two-cylinder. It is a two-cylinder but a two-stage. Um, so I hope this review helps you and one last thing this is as I mentioned this is the compared the feet that go on the bottom to deal with the vibration um, and overall it seems like it's going to be a good compressor um, replacement with my previous was oilless and I bought a
Precision Matthews vertical milling machine and I have converted it to a full CNC and this machine is going to be the one that runs the air. Anyway, peace out. I hope you liked it. Bye.